a bike tour into the unknown and around the world, the exact opposite of security and a 9 to 5 job. Despite our clear lack of experience, we got rid of our belongings and hit the road. During our first 100 days of cycling life, we've learned to overcome many difficulties. The physical part got a lot easier and some of the initial anxieties got reduced, but we still struggle regularly with ourselves and each other. But many of our conflicts are rooted in fairly basic questions like where should we go and why? Anyways, we have just left Isparta and are on our way to Konya in central Turkey, a city we had never heard about. The initial plan was to go exactly in the direction where the wind is coming from. And that's no fun. Here's the crossroads. So it's exactly from straight ahead. I think we'll regret this, but uh, let's hope uh, that it's at least very beautiful, the landscape. There's a lot of challenges involved and traveling like this and one of the reasons we did this or I at least the lack of choice you feel you have every day good night then and now the abundance of choice you have every second do I go left do I go right do I stop do I not stop how far do I go today do I put my tent here or in another place yeah that can be a little bit overwhelming because you need to adapt to new situations every second you know, we want to do the filming, you know, we want to do nice shots in between and they take time and effort. Especially because they usually happen... Oh, we need to go left or right? Aref! I think we have to go left, but I'm not super sure. But I think we need to go left. <laughs> I think we need to go to the left too. Yeah. I think we need to pass by Aksu. You know that? Yeah, one of those choices was yesterday. Do we go left? Do we go right? Do we follow the lake? go the easy way because it's flat and we would have had the wind in the back and had terrible headwind. <laughs> we didn't make it very far yesterday in the evening but we found a very nice place to put our tent. And now we got this as a present. Very beautiful this valley but in that moment you know you don't know. So I think this is uh, why many people struggle in daily life and don't do things. It's because they're always scared about the possible negative outcomes if they do something not so much if they don't do something more if they do something but you could do something and then it's worse than it was before so why would you do it I did uh, act like that for a long part of my life and I try to get rid of that behavior by doing this cycling around the world uh, and it gives me this
Yesterday we had a climb from the villages there and uh, we did only 40 kilometers. It took a bit long. We arrived only at around 7 o'clock here. We had a fight yesterday and spent the whole afternoon on fighting and of course not filming and not cycling. While touring self-supported with a four-season setup, heavy film and photo equipment and sturdy but not exactly lightweight expedition bicycles is a physical challenge, the mental part is sometimes much harder. The sheer overwhelming number of options with simultaneous objective cluelessness about the actual consequences would often be challenging enough on its own. Moving through the big, wide and unknown world as a couple creates potential for even more conflict. Our different cultural backgrounds regularly lead to diametrically opposed approaches to the countless decisions, while bearing the responsibility for the other and our joint project. Ironically, it usually escalates when we find ourselves in an especially beautiful surrounding. We can no longer remember what the catalyst for that very intense dispute on Didigal Mountain was. However, it must have been about a serious, if not downright state-bearing matter. Fortunately, so far we have always managed to bury the head chat within a day and to remember why we went on this journey. Granted, there would hardly be time for more fighting anyways, as the next challenge, however trivial, might be just around the corner. We finally are down the mountain in the search for some food. It does not look very promising. Can I then? Supermarket? 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 Öbür yoldan direkt Kratenalar var. Okay. Oraya var bir daha sorun. Hemen yakın orada. Orada. Okay. Orada. Teşekkürler. Teşekkürler. Hayır. 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 Things. She understood the old man that there would be something and something better on the right side. Now we're rolling down gently. And I tell you now, if there's nothing better on the right side, I will have to cycle back. Motorcycles, maybe there's a coffee shop or something. I see Ekmek, that's good, 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 good. She's really a genius, that's amazing. Ayman, Ayman. Merhaba. Merhaba. Ah, supermarket. Yippee! Yeah, yeah, wow. It's a place to sit yeah, and but we can have some time. Fantastic. Oh, okay, let's park our horses. Mmm. <laughs> yummy toast with uh, ses, some ses. cheese and sucuk. Hi, and toast. Mmm. Hey, me. But I've, ne I've never been on a horse. I'm a little bit scared. Up I'm slowly. Oh, very good. <laughs> no, 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm riding a horse. <laughs> uh huh. On the left. Ah, okay, okay, it hurts. Ah, oh, perfect. It's it's very easy actually. It's not so hard. I mean, luckily it's not going very fast because if it was going very fast, um, I would probably die. But uh, this this is a good horse. Does the horse have a name? Name? Matthias, Arel, Kutschat, Kutschat, Kutschat. 
Muat'ın ismi yok. At. <gülüyor> Just 30 seconds ago, Arab starts screaming. But I'm like, okay, what's what's now? What's going on? And she's a little behind me, like you know. And there's a snake. I don't know, hurling over the street just between our bicycles. Uh, I would have loved to to film it, but it was so quick. The snake was so quick. Uh, and it went into the into the marshland on the other side of the road. Okay, let's get some information about snakes. Apparently there are more than 45 species of snakes in Turkey. Fortunately only 12 of them are venomous and should be avoided at all costs. Given that new information and the fact that we had just seen a snake moving near light speed, we were quite glad that we found a warm shower host in the next city, Beyşehir. Actually, we ended up in the local hotel for free, without even seeing our benefactor. A 100% snake-free, huge hotel room with a very comfortable bed and a warm shower. Well, we did not ask further questions and only later learned that our night had been sponsored by a local weapons shop. Well, that's a little awkward. Anyhow, the next day after a brief visit to the local Eşreforlu Mosque, famous for its wooden roof, we headed straight for Konya. By then we had learned that the city is an important religious center. While we are not religious, it is obviously an important part of a culture. And Turkey is the first Muslim country on our route. So here we go. While wild camping had been easy in the mountains, closer to Konya the landscape changed and we found it difficult to find a spot that was not used for agriculture. To be sure not to accidentally destroy some crops, we decided to ask a local where we could put our tent. The first time someone spontaneously invited us to his home. It's unbelievable, this nice man. Ali? Ali. Ali. Matthias. Matthias. Ali. We saw him sitting outside in the garden and said, hello, can we put the tent? And he said, yes, come on, come on. <laughs> and now he even invited us into his home, uh, which is uh, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. And also, we can take a shower. Wow, nice. <laughs> While Ali built this place for his grandchildren, here we certainly also felt like children for a moment or two. To Konya. The start of the day is very good. I think I found some money. Ah, one Turkish lira. We are rich. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Tain with pekmes. Pekmes is basically concentrated grape juice, so syrup, grape syrup, and tain, so sesame, uh, grinded sesame uh, seeds uh, with uh, grape syrup, nothing else. Really tasty, really tasty. Mm. 
While tahin pekmez is 100% natural and without added sugars, it should make us fly to Konya. Maybe one should interpret the term flying to Konya in a broader sense. Konya will be the biggest city for us so far with a bicycle. A little bit anxious, but see for yourself. what we can find here. Tashikula, Tashikula. time it's hot while cycling we're sweating a lot but we get to eat all of this fresh produce it's amazing luckily our host Ismail lives in the center of this bustling metropolis with its over two million inhabitants we visited the bazaar and cooked something super healthy to compensate for a proper portion of Konya's number one's delicacy farine kebab lamb slowly cooked in an oven for many hours a tender but very rich treat Strengthened and well rested, we then also explored what brings the majority of people to Konya. Millions make the annual pilgrimage to the city, especially to visit the Mivlana Museum, the tomb of Mohammed bin Mohammed bin Al Hussein, Al Khatibi, Al Balkhi, Al Bakri, or Rumi for short. He was a famous 13th century poet, Hanafi law expert, Islamic scholar, Maturidi theologian, and Sufi mystic who was born in Greater Khorasan, modern-day Afghanistan, but lived, apparently worked, and eventually died in Konya. Sufi whirling is a form of physically active meditation which is still practiced by the Sufi dervishes of the Mevlevi order, which was, of course, founded by Rumi. It is a customary meditation practice performed within the Sama, a worship ceremony to reach greater connection with Allah. This is sought through abandoning one's personal desires by listening to the music, focusing on God and spinning one's body in repetitive circles, which has been seen as a symbolic imitation of planets orbiting the Sun. While it is not exactly clear to us how violently spinning in circles helps to find a direction in life or in general, our deepest respect to the dervishes. While they keep spinning constantly for about 15 minutes, we wouldn't dare trying this ourselves. Instead, we rather keep our wheels spinning, cycling further east, seeking new questions and answers, experiences, people and places. A special thanks to our amazing contributors on buymeacoffee.com slash aworldbiketour. If you enjoy our content, please give a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments below. It makes a massive difference. To not miss out on future videos, make sure to hit the bell and activate notifications. Until next time. And may the wind be in your back.